The Hours of the Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ by Luisa Picaretta. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer to precede each hour of the Passion. O oh, my adorable Jesus, I humbly bow before your divine presence. May your most loving heart help me to meditate on the 24 hours of your most sorrowful passion. In that passion, you wanted to suffer so much for our love in your adorable body and in your most holy soul, even unto death on the cross. Oh, give me help, grace, love, profound compassion and understanding of your sufferings as I now meditate this hour. For those hours that I cannot meditate, I offer you my desire to meditate them. Accept my intention to meditate on all the hours, even when I must sleep or perform my duties. O merciful Lord Jesus, united with you, grant that my intention may be profitable for me and for many, as if I had effectively carried out what I desire to do. I give you thanks, O oh my Jesus. I thank you for calling me to union with you in prayer. To please you, I take your thoughts, your tongue, and your heart. I want to pray with them. I fuse myself in your will and in your love. I extend my arms to embrace you. I rest my head on your heart, and I begin. 11 p.m., the third hour of the agony in the garden. My sweet Jesus, my heart can no longer bear it. I look at you and your agony continues. Blood streams in rivulets from your whole body, so much so that you grow too weak to stand and you fall in a pool of blood. Oh, my love, my heart breaks upon seeing you so weak and exhausted. Your adorable face and your creative hands rest on the ground all stained with blood. As creatures send you rivers of iniquity, you want to pour forth rivers of blood to drown their transgressions in your most precious blood and to give each soul through your blood the assurance of your forgiveness. But, oh, my Jesus, please get up. You suffer too much. Your love need not do any more. And as my beloved Jesus seems to die in his own blood, love gives him new life. I see him move with difficulty, covered with blood and mud. He rises and seems to want to walk. But not having the strength, he drags himself with difficulty. My tender life, let me carry you in my arms. Are you going to your dear disciples? What pain your adorable heart feels at finding them asleep again. With a faint and trembling voice, you call them. My children, do not sleep. The hour is at hand. Can you not see how much I have suffered? For goodness sake, help me. Do not abandon me in these last hours. Almost tottering, you are about to fall near them, but John holds out his arms to bear you up. So unrecognizable are you that if it were not for the gentleness and tenderness of your voice, they would not have recognized you. You warn them to watch and pray, and you re-enter the garden, but with a second wound in your heart. In this wound, O oh my love, I see all the sins of your chosen souls. In spite of the outpouring of your favors and gifts, kisses and caresses. In the nights of trial, they forget your love and your gifts. They seem to grow dazed and sleepy, thus losing the spirit of constant vigilance and prayer. My Jesus, 
how true it is that after having seen you and tasted your gifts, too much is needed to be deprived of them and resist. Only a miracle can enable such souls to endure this test. That is why I suffer with you for these souls whose negligence, inconstancy, and offenses wound your heart so bitterly. If they should take even one step that could displease you, I beg you to surround them with so much grace that they will not fall asleep, that they may not lose the spirit of a continuous prayer. My gentle Jesus, as you return to the garden, you seem too weak to go on, covered with blood and dirt. You raise your face to heaven and repeat for the third time, Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me. Holy Father, help me. I need comfort. It is true that because of the sins taken upon myself, I am nauseating, loathsome, and the least of men before your infinite majesty. Your justice is roused to anger against me. But look at me, O oh Father. I am always your son, who am one with you. O oh Father, help me. Have pity on me. Do not leave me without comfort. O oh, my sweet good, I seem to hear you calling your dear mother for help. Sweet mother, hold me close in your arms as you did when I was a child. Give me the milk that I used to take from you to refresh me and to sweeten the bitterness of my agony. Give me your heart that held all my happiness. My mother, Mary Magdalene, dear apostles, all you who love me, help me, comfort me. Do not leave me alone in these dire moments. Gather around me, all of you. Comfort me with your compassion. Comfort me with your companionship and your love. Jesus, my love, who could bear to see you in these dire conditions? What heart could see you drowned in blood without breaking? Who could hear you begging for comfort so sorrowfully and not weep. Be consoled, my Jesus. I see the Father sending you an angel of comfort to draw you out of this state of agony. With his help, you will be able to surrender yourself into the hands of the Jews. And while you are with the angel, I will go around heaven and earth. Permit me to take your blood to all men as the token of each one's salvation and to bring back to you in exchange the comfort of their affections, heartbeats, thoughts, steps, and actions. My Heavenly Mother, I come to you so that we may give Jesus' blood to all souls. Gentle Mother, Jesus wants comfort, and the greatest comfort that we can give him is to bring him souls. Mary Magdalene, accompany us. All you angels, come and see what a state Jesus has been reduced. He wants comfort from everyone, and he finds himself so exhausted that he will turn no one away. O light of the sun, come to cast out the darkness of this night to give Jesus comfort. O oh, stars, with your flickering rays, come down from heaven. Come to give Jesus comfort. Flowers of the earth, come with your fragrance. Birds, come with your warblings. Come, elements of the earth, to comfort Jesus. Come, O oh sea, to refresh and wash Jesus. He is our creator, our life, our all. Come, all, to comfort him to give him homage as our sovereign Lord. But Jesus does not seek light, stars, flowers, or birds. He wants souls, souls. 
Oh, look, my gentle love, everyone is here with me. Your dear mother is by your side. Now rest in her arms. It will be a comfort for her to hold you to her breast, for she has shared abundantly in your sorrowful agony. Mary Magdalene is also here, as well as Martha and all the loving souls of all centuries. And I include our dear Louisa, who is praying with us now. Oh Jesus, please accept them and say a word of love and forgiveness to everyone. Bind them all in your love, so that no soul may ever leave you again. Conclusion of the Agony But ah, it seems to me that you say, O oh daughter, how many souls flee me by force and fall into eternal ruin? So how can my sorrow be soothed? If I love a single soul as much as I love all souls together. Agonizing Jesus, while it seems that your life is about to be snuffed out, I already hear the death rattle of your agony. Death's approach darkens your beautiful eyes. Your most holy limbs lie abandoned. Very often I no longer hear you breathe and I feel my heart break for pain. I embrace you, and I feel that you are cold. I shake you, but you give no sign of life. Jesus, are you dead? Sorrowful mother, angels of heaven, come to weep over Jesus. Do not let me live without him, for already I cannot. I embrace him more tightly, and I hear him take another breath, and then again, he gives no sign of life. I beg him, Jesus, Jesus, my life, do not die. I hear the shouts of your enemies coming to take you away. Who will defend you in this helpless state? Roused, he seems to rise from death to life. He looks at me and says, Child, are you here? Have you not been a witness of my pains and of the many deaths I suffered? Then know, O oh daughter, that in these three hours of most bitter agony, I have enclosed in myself all the lives of creatures and have suffered all their pains and their very deaths, giving to each one my own life. My agonies will sustain theirs. For their sake, my suffering and death will change into a fountain of sweetness and of life. How dearly souls cost me, if only I were reciprocated. You saw that while I was dying, I began to breathe again. Those were the deaths of creatures that I felt within myself. My exhausted Jesus, since you wanted to enclose my life within you, and therefore my death as well, I beseech you by your most bitter agony to help me at the hour of my death. I have given you my heart as a place of refuge and rest. I have given you my arms to uphold you. In, into your hands I place my entire being. And oh, how willingly I would give myself into the hands of your enemies to be able to die in your place. O oh, life of my heart, come. In the moment of death, give back to me what I have given to you, your company. Your heart is my bed and resting place your arms for support, and your weary breath to ease my anguish. As I breathe, I will breathe by means of your breath. Like purifying air, it will purify me of every stain and prepare me to enter eternal bliss. Even more, my sweet Jesus, 
in that moment you will give your most holy humanity to my soul. Looking at me, you will see me through yourself. And looking at yourself, you will not find anything in you to judge. Then you will bathe me in your blood. You will dress me with a spotless garment of your most holy worth. You will adorn me with your love and giving me the last kiss, raise me from earth to heaven. I beseech you to do for all the dying what I ask for myself. Enclose them all in your love's embrace and give them the kiss of union with you. Save all of them and let no one be lost. My afflicted love, I offer you this hour in memory of your passion and death. I offer to disarm the just anger of God for so many sins, for the triumph of the Holy Church in every holy thing and in every holy freedom, that it may fill the earth with saints, for the conversion of all sinners, and to win peace for all people, especially in Italy. I offer it for our sanctification and for the relief of the souls in purgatory. But I see that your enemies draw near. You want to leave me to go towards them. O oh, Jesus, permit me to offer you all the holy kisses of your most holy mother, placing them on your lips as if I kiss those very lips that Judas will dare to soil with his infernal kiss. Let me dry your face bathed in blood, that face upon which blows and spits will now be poured. Pressing close to your heart, I will not leave you, but I will follow you always. Bless me and help me. May it be so. Thanksgiving Prayer I give you thanks, O oh my sweetest Lord, for graciously allowing me to be in your company for at least an hour of your dreadful agony in the garden. Ah, my good Jesus, you found too may your comfort in me, but the infinite love and superabundant charity of your merciful heart allows you to find solace even in the least act of compassion a creature displays for you. The sight of your adorable person, as it lay trembling, dejected, exhausted, and humiliated in the dust, coated in bloody sweat, in the dark terror of a Gethsemane, is branded in my mind forever. My Jesus, I experienced at staying with you in your suffering and tasting even just one drop of the most bitter bitterness of your divine heart is the greatest fate one could wish for on earth. <laughs> My Jesus, I renounce all earthly and vain things and only want you, my oppressed, my suffering, my afflicted Lord. I want to be your ever faithful companion from the garden up to Mount Calvary. O oh, Jesus, permit that I be taken prisoner with you and with you dragged before the courts. Make me share in the affronts, the insults, spitting, and the slaps that your enemies will heap on you. Lead me with you from Pilate to Herod. Tie me with you to the pillar and make me feel some of your scourging. Give me many of your thorns, O Jesus, that they may pierce me too. Make them sentence me too to die crucified at your side. You will be a victim of your love of me, and I will be your victim in atonement for my own sins. Give me the fate of the Cyrenian, that I may follow you up to Calvary, and there Make me be nailed to the cross to agonize and die with you. O oh, mother of sorrows, 
who helped me to take pity on Jesus as he lay agonizing in the garden. Now help me to be with you, that I may be crucified on the same cross as Jesus and offer him worthy reparations with the merits of his passion and death on the cross. May it be so. Reflection for the 11 p.m. hour. In this third hour of Gethsemane, Jesus asks help from heaven. His suffering is so profound that he even asks his own disciples for comfort. In whatever circumstance, sorrow, or misfortune, do I always seek help from heaven? Even if I seek assistance from others, do I do so prudently, asking those who can offer me holy comfort? And if I do not receive the comfort I seek from others, am I at least resigned to their disinterest, abandoning myself even more into the arms of Jesus? My Jesus was comforted by an angel. Can I say that I am like Jesus' angel, standing by him and keeping constant vigil to comfort him and share his affliction? Yet, to be a true angel for Jesus, we must accept our sorrows as sent by him, as divine sorrows. Only then will we dare comfort a God so afflicted. If we accept suffering only on a human level, we cannot use it to comfort this God-man, and consequently, we cannot act as angels. When Jesus sends me sorrows, it seems he also sends a chalice where I should put the fruit of those sorrows. These afflictions, endured with love and resignation, will then be converted into the sweetest nectar. And I will go to my suffering Jesus and offer the chalice that he sent me, and my sorrows now turned into sweetness. Like an angel, I will bring it to his lips, that he may drink it, to comfort him and soothe him. In every sorrow, I will then say, Jesus is calling me to be an angel close to him. He wants my comfort, and for this reason, he makes me share in his sorrows. Jesus, my love, in my suffering, I search for your heart to rest. And in your suffering, I wish to make reparation with mine. In this exchange, may I always be your angel of consolation. Thanksgiving after each hour. My beloved Jesus, you have called me to this hour of your passion to keep you company, and I have come. I seem to hear you in anguish, painfully praying, atoning, suffering, and pleading with the most moving and eloquent words for the salvation of souls. I try to follow you in everything. Now I owe you my heartfelt thank you, and I bless you. Yes, O oh Jesus, I repeat my thank you thousands and thousands of times. I bless you for all that you have done and suffered for me and for everyone. I thank you and I bless you for every drop of blood you shed. I thank you for every breath, for every heartbeat, and for every step. I thank you for every word, glance, affliction, and outrage that you had to endure. In everything, oh my Jesus, I intend to give you my thank you and I bless you. Oh my Jesus, let my soul send forth a continuous flow of thanksgiving and blessings to you to draw down upon all of us the stream of your blessings and graces. Oh my Jesus, press me to your heart with your holy hands. Mark each particle of my being with your I bless you so that nothing but a continuous hymn of blessings flows from me to you. My sweet love, I rest in your heart. I am afraid to leave it. Is it not true that you will keep me there? Our heartbeats will continually touch.
so that you will give me life, love, and close and inseparable union with you. Please, I beg you, my sweet Jesus, if you see that I am about to run from you at times, let your heartbeat accelerate in mine. Let your hands press me closer to your heart. Let your eyes look at me and pierce me with rays of fire so that I may feel your presence and immediately return to union with you. Oh, my Jesus, be on guard so that I may not exhaust you. I beg you to watch over me. Oh, give me a kiss. Embrace me and bless me. Give me your most holy hands so that I can do all that I must do united with you. Amen. Fiat, my Lord. Jesus and Mary, I commend my soul and all souls to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.